School is in. But are you really ready to learn? Open your eyes to a new day in education with The Awakening Educator, a program specifically designed to explore a new mindful way of educating our youth. Learn about social-emotional learning, new modalities of teaching, and the most relevant topics in education with your hosts, Susan Andrian and Megan Sweet. Susan and Megan will take you inside the issues by looking at them from different points of view, from policies and research to teaching models that are actually used in schools. There's never a dull moment in this classroom. Have any questions you'd like to ask? Maybe you have knowledge you'd like to share and share your thoughts live on air. Grab a pen and paper and get ready to open your textbooks and minds to a new way of learning on The Awakening Educator. So we're excited to have uh, Peter Lamada here and Lydia Yamaguchi, who um, are going to talk with us about a a project that they've been running. Um, Maybe we could start with you each introducing yourselves a little bit, um, who you are, where you're from, what you do, and then we'll we'll get into a bit about the story time with Mr. Lamada. Do you want to go ahead, Lydia? Sure. Hi, Lydia Yamaguchi. I um, I use she and they pronouns. I'm from Long Beach, California, but I work in Oakland Unified School District now. So in the Bay Area with y'all, you lovely folks. Um, and I, I, I believe strongly in health and thriving and well-being for students and young people and communities in all ways. And I also love reading. So... <laughs> So here we are, um, and those are some of the some of the hats that I bring to this. And also, yes, I've been working on story time with Mr. Lamada from day negative two, I think, <laughs> <laughs> or however many days it was between the between the the start of the idea and the first reading. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Welcome, Lydia. <laughs> Oh, and I'm Peter Limada. I teach second grade now. I always have to remind myself it's not first anymore. I teach second grade at Emerson Elementary in Auckland Unified. And um, yeah, I love reading and um, and staying active, sports, biking, that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome both of you. It's such a, a pleasure to have both of you here. And Susan and I have had, we're in the, you are, you all are, are maybe the tail end of the last show, perhaps there might be one more, um, exploring distance learning and how our shift from teaching in person and the things, the way that we used to orient to our kids and families in person have shifted since we've been online. Um, I, we know that the story time with Mr. Lamada isn't necessarily specifically around that, but we felt like it was a great place to bring in this conversation or ways that teachers are innovating, how they're um, supporting students. We've also spoken with um, uh, an assembly member uh, and um, somebody in, in, the, in charge of school boards for the state of California, or at least in charge of the communications for school boards. And we had a teacher panel um, all talking about the same issue of, of now that we're, we've been distance learning for almost a year, um, how has that transformed um, how we approach school and our kids and education and what are what's coming up next once we hopefully fingers, toes, everything crossed, we can be back together in person again. Um, So just kind of contemplating that question is what we've been doing. So really excited to have you here as a part of that. Um, Susan, do you have anything to add? Anything you want to, do you want to tee up the show? I mean, I think our our focus, we have been extending this series just because we're all living it. And I think for educators, this is really just such a there's so many different layers to what's happening and we are wanting to really Mm -hmm. start to think about how is this transforming our practice as educators, as we move into the future of education, what have been the lessons that we've learned and how are, when we do come back together, how are we going to be doing things different? And, and we were really excited to have you guys on today because I think right away, uh, Peter, right away, you were, you were, you were on the Ellen show at the beginning of (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that, that was like a whirlwind, right? You started with story time and then seeing you on the Ellen show and bringing funds to the school. That was so exciting because you, you were one of the teachers that immediately just sort of pivoted and figured out, well, what am I going to do to engage my kids in this new world? And now that you've been at it for quite a while, I'm really excited to hear about like, how does this 
how is this going to change? How do we change education moving forward to be more equitable, to be more like reaching every student, to be more creative and more fun, which I think you had found a way to do with story time on Mr. Mata. So, yeah. Maybe oh, we start sorry, with the beginning. So you yeah. said you know, day, day negative two. What was the negative two idea? <laughs> and and how did that happen? Uh, because we actually say, Susan and I know both Lydia and Peter from before. <laughs> and I'm still I'm like, oh, I've always loved Peter and Lydia. They're wonderful. Yeah. But like, what's the story time with Mr. LaMotta business? And it's so exciting. Like, it's so cool. So um, for me personally, you know. I feel like I knew you when you for, in your first year teaching as well as oh, Mata. So, <laughs> so exciting to see this evolution for me as you know a dinosaur in the business at this point. But um, anyway, how did this? How did it begin? How, where did you guys start with this? Um, yeah, I'm, I, you know, like it sounds like Susan. It's almost like you were fly on a on a wall, and that was all <laughs> happening because it pretty much was that. It was just like okay, this is done, and we knew for about a week that you know, it was coming school. We're just waiting on the announcement. I think at that point that school would be, um, would go distance or at least would close. And so we, when that happened on that Friday and I came home and I just started thinking, it's like, well, what are some ways that I, you know, that I could still maintain, you know, communication with the kids or that the fun aspects of the class. And, um, then the story time idea came to mind and then, um, Lydia happened to be there so I was that like okay this is what do you think of this idea and um and Lydia feel free to jump in as well like what you thought but like yeah we started talking about it right then it's like okay how would it look like where would it be you know like looking at the different platforms and and you know what would be equitable where could we get most of the kids and so on and so that was the the start and actually thinking that Saturday it was like okay this is happening maybe this coming week so which was like the very very um first day and then I think Monday I can't remember what happened if it if, if it was too much to put out at once so it instead started that Tuesday <laughs> yeah. well I think that was it really was it was a very much a conversation of like how what there there are things about learning that are fun that are joyful that are about connecting with people mm-hmm. that are about um about learning through stories and also that kind of interactive element and so I think yeah really thinking about okay we know that this is something we know that stories are there like there are so many books <laughs> like there mm-hmm. and reading is so important and so where do you go from there and it was okay what platforms are like we want it to be open like obviously internet safety is important and having as few barriers to being able to jump on at any moment. So ideally having it public and what are the platforms available for that? And I I think it started Saturday, but I feel like it started crystallizing on Sunday. So I think that was part of why Monday didn't happen because it was literally like, (laughs) like, 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 right right then later. This sounds like, this sounds like the awakening educator and how we sort of actually, yeah. (laughs) This is like the start of this show. I mean, we are yeah. talking about? We're two years in and we're still like, so what are we doing? I mean, uh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it was because this is balance. I'm, I'm very much like, I'll jump on things. It's just like, mm-hmm. oh, this can happen. And I'm ready. Like right now, I'm, I'm like that. And Lydia is definitely the one that thinks more. <laughs> and like always kind of holding back. I'm just like, no, we're doing like, this is, this is what can happen. And so, mm-hmm. and then getting the polished aspects of things i feel like there's always like i'll be doing something like oh how about if you try this you know like this might work one way and then so those have been things that have been um uh, changing with time but i was so happy i think one of the things that to get it running and also to i think hit the points with seeing kids hop on and actually Mm -hmm. you know like know that okay my kids are jumping on and we are continuing this reading and people communicating you know even just saying oh I'm buying this book right away. Oh, I got this book from the library. And so you're like, okay, it is mm. having an impact. And so, yeah. That was- so was the original idea that you were going to read to your own students? So the idea was we had this platform. We can read stories to our, so, is, so the story time with Ms. Lomata is you reading stories to kids. Yeah. Um, and interacting with them. Um, and we'll, we'll link to the, your site and people can check it out because it's beautiful. Um, but was the original idea like this is just for my kids and a way for me to connect with them? Or was it, was it always a desire to be more open or like where did, what was that 
for you? you no, know, it was uh, honestly, like you're saying, it's been so organic with everything, the way it's developed, but it was initially meant for my kids. But then also thinking with my kids, I mean, this is one of the things we did not have a closed platform as a school site. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure every other district in the country. Like, so it was that sort of thing is like, okay. But then my parents as well, we talk of internet and all those things that people do not have available. So we're like, okay, what is something that people will have access to? And from talking to students in the classroom, you hear a lot of them like, oh, I played this game on my mom's phone. Or I did this, I did that. And so we would say like, okay, definitely people have phones. That would be one way to get everybody. And so we thought like, okay, Facebook. And if it's a public page, you don't have to log in. You do not have to have certain things. And so that was, um, those were definitely factors that came in. But then, of course, since it went out on my personal page as well, I just, and I felt like then friends started jumping on. Yeah. I know what you have. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and I think that um, it's, it started with the students that, um, that Peter has a direct relationship with for sure. Um, and also, like, keep me in mind that as a, a lower elementary teacher, like, that's also many generations of students, even just within Emerson at this point for the so many years now, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> relatively speaking. Well, like... Megan would tell you about my first year. God, <laughs> <laughs> those were not being recorded. <laughs> But thinking about there's already even just in that, like a larger community than just one classroom there. Um, But I think even from the beginning, like one of the taglines that we put on the page was like for the young and the young at heart. And like thinking about how is a super weird and confusing and hard time for so many people. And so also just like having that moment of connection and joy via just like Facebook comments and a video even for other people, I think there was like pretty early on in the evolution of things, thinking about how um, how it could be for other people, especially starting from our networks and growing. And I also think there's an element of like, it was, I think that maybe this was a little bit of me pushing it, but it's like, if we're going to do this, we're going to like do this. <laughs> Like yeah. we're gonna we're gonna like <laughs> make the page and write the bio and have the pictures and do the descriptions and like do the like go through the go through the steps of making it a thing so that it like people can take it like take it as a as a, a I don't that was so I think that there's an <laughs> there's a couple things that you said that I I mean I as you guys know because you you'll see i'll be sitting at my desk and i'll get the little notification uh you know story time with mr lamata's live and 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 you know i i jump on quite frequently yeah no thank you (laughs) and i always comment and 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 um i love seeing like that there's kids from all over the world right we had there's kids on there from africa and chicago Mm -hmm. and and like all over the world and there's something about you and I'm a I'm a pretty sta- you know like grown person mo- <laughs> mostly <laughs> and when Peter says my name I, I'm like oh, he said my name you know and and I mean I could it, it's but there is something about that and we know it when we're teaching PBIS or when we're teaching other things right there's something about being seen, being recognized, having my name heard, like th- that conne- personal connection mm-hmm. that you do. And you could tell that there's a lot of work that actually goes into the show and researching and getting permission from the, um, from the authors and the um, publishers. And it's, it seems like this really organic, but also promoting local authors and authors of color and stories of color and, um, I, I, so there's all these like organic things that are happening that are, are so grounded in both education, but also in this beautiful community piece. So I'm wondering about speaking to like, as the fans grow and are, are there some kids that are just always faithful tuning in? And then there are, there are others like, how does that process work and how do you keep that fan base going? Yeah, um, it's it's so amazing, like just seeing that growth. And it was one of those, I think, when you watch the first few episodes, like you, you see that change also like mm-hmm. the energy and everything. And I think it was part of it was me getting the energy from people that pop on, you know, and it was just like you were saying, if I see your name, it's a name I recognize or, it's, you know, like even if it's a name I recognize for the second time mm-hmm. or if I don't, I'm, I, I've, I, I've gotten to uh, somehow I always remember like, 
might be the first per- this person's first time and they comment back and so it's just like gives me this really good energy like an affirmation almost to be like please keep going and it just um it keeps me going and then um looking at the with with the the students in terms of um evolving and seeing them there it's it's definitely um it's come over time as well, realizing like certain, you know, certain responsibility has come with it. Um, Mm -hmm. And also realizing like, well, how did I feel when I got, for example, during my um, BITSA, the uh, teacher induction, right? When I got a person, uh, a coach that I felt I really clicked with, I I could, it was a black man. It was, you know, like somebody Mm -hmm. who, understood me and not that the people that I'd worked with before were not great they were amazing but just something wasn't clicking and you have this person who talked my language in a way it was just simple things that sometimes being like oh do we need more time on this you know like let's meet another day somebody who's just flexible and it's just like it's like oh my goodness it was such a good feeling and so realizing those things those little things sometimes how it you know like we don't think about much, but it really matters. And so bringing that representation, I think, was one of the things. I think, Lydia, you're the one probably, that, I think, that suggested we start doing themes, or I can't remember how that um, transitioned into that. It's been, there's been so many evolution <laughs> points with, with so many aspects of it that it's so interesting to reflect back. And we asked about it, too, to, like, recognize some of those things. Um, I, I think that there, there are various choices around, um, yeah, trying to find different themes in the books we had available to us. I think it feels like it was a little bit of a, I think a, a, from both of us, a, a, a very much like clear that, yes, we want to support local authors. We want to support stories by and about people of color and various different identities and different experiences. And um, like that, I think that was very core but and like but it wasn't like a do we do this it was just like okay like this is how we do this Mm -hmm. um kind of thing and I think that from there um getting connected via like friends and via people and the via other educators to creators in the bay area was really cool and I think also sort of with that that the reciprocity of energy in a way like Mm -hmm. of of the enthusiasm of viewers to Mr. Lamada is also authors to having their stories read and shared. And I think that's been a really cool uh, side effect in a way, but now become more central to it of it being really like seeing how enthusiastic people were about seeing their stories read and then being like being able to then um, like we started doing a post at the beginning of the week with all of the books that are going to be read for the week instead of at the end like at first it was kind of a recap of the week but then mm-hmm. realizing that authors were excited to know that their book was coming up and it gives them a chance to share that it's coming up and kind of buy promotes it the that show way. It, it promotes the show and so, if yeah. kids want to get the book and read along with you they know what's coming and they can check the book out from the library or buy the book so I, I can see that Thing. yeah no for sure and and Lydia will tell you like there's certain things that I push back on and like oh, <laughs> you know this? And that, but it's been definitely it's been um it's been a, an opportunity for me to reflect on many things and uh even just certain topics that I might not have otherwise shared with people or talked about and even just growing up in Zambia where you know like the ruse and everything is very different from living in the bay and I felt like you know like where you know like say things like even just gay rights are so you know like visible and people are there you know making uh, making it known and making sure that we're doing the right things and so being in spaces like that and and also realizing the responsibility that I had to make sure you know like that I'm I'm playing a part in making sure all the story time platform is is a part of making sure that acceptance and you know understanding and all those things that go with it are, are highlighted and so it was big and i remember when i was going to read i think one of the first books that talked about um you know like gender identity and stuff and i i think i i talked to lydia quite a bit about it and just thinking how the reaction back home would be and so on but also in the end it was like look the right thing is the right thing. And that's what I'm going to do. So So I'm curious, what was the reaction back home or was there any? 
No, no. So that's the thing. Sometimes, you know, you fear so much, like, but it was so great. It was really um, refreshing to just see how many people wrote back even from home saying, what a beautiful story. And even mm-hmm. somebody reaching out and saying, oh, I had this conversation with my son and they were asking me, like, how would somebody not know? And so it was like, yeah, these are conversations that are happening. And if a six-year-old, a seven-year-old somewhere across the world who I was probably not going to communicate with, with a topic like that, was able to share for me, that was, you know, like it's, it's, those are the little things that really bring me joy when, when, when it's all done, when you come to a Friday like this and sit back and like, oh, wow, it's been a great week. And wow. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, there's so much of what everyone said that just, um, I want to jump in on the first is just saying the name. So I love that. That's what you responded to Susan, <laughs> because it, I often hearken back to romp and romper room and I'm old and romper room is a local program, but there was a woman and I forget her name. I think it was Miss Nancy, but she would do her, you know, it was like a PBS show. She would take the mirror out. Did she have romper room where you are? Yeah, we had did romper room and zoom did it too. Oh, okay. So there was like, so she would take out a magic mirror and look through the magic mirror and say everyone's names. And I would wait for her to say my name. And she never, ever said my oh. name ever because <laughs> Megan was not a popular name then. And, um, I was, I like, it's still, I'm 48. I, I, I miss, like, I remember not being called in rock for him. So I just would like name, like, you know, I've gotten over it, but like, you know, oh, sure, you've gotten over it, Megan. Say Uh, my name. (laughs) I'm going to get on just so you say my name. But like, that's a big, so I was naming like as a kid, that would have been a huge, that's a huge deal. And it's still a huge deal for Susan as a grown up. Um, So I think just that recognition, but I think actually that's a theme that I'm hearing throughout all of the show is really intentionally including kids um, in a powerful way, which is really important. And I, and I love that you did at the beginning and I have a little reflection and wondering like how quickly it blew up. I'd love just to hear that because mm-hmm. parallel to you all, uh, I work at an organization um, that teaches mindfulness and we decided just to have a few, I think we did it for a month, but uh, a few live courses of like mindfulness activities for kids. And we didn't know how it would go. And the first day we had 15,000 people join because I think there was this like, <gasps> like we, the kids are at home and we don't know what to do and oh shoot. <laughs> and like, I've got to work and how do I like, cause those beginning now we're kind of used to it. Like we're humans are amazingly adaptable and we've like figured it out. But those first months were hard. Like, what do you do when you have meetings or work or whatever, and you have a kid at home and classrooms are, you know, there was really nothing going on or very little. And um, so I'm wondering how quickly was it success? And um, and just wanted to highlight how much I appreciate the intentional equity um, and inclusive um, elements because that's really important. But like, how like how has it grown um, for folks that don't know it yet? Like, how did it begin? Where are you now? Yeah. Do you want to speak to that, Lydia? I can, I can add on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, again, I Lydia there, comes been... in with a different lens. So I, I'm always, <laughs> I, for me, it's also a learning when I hear her speak. About okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been saying we need a we need a Lydia for the awakening. Right. <laughs> we do. We're we're we're, we're going to try and we might try and steal Lydia at least borrow <laughs> Lydia. So you know. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay. I w- so, I mean, A, as you can tell, people enjoy being in Mr. Lamada's company in general, mm-hmm. and that included before the pandemic. And so he has many friends in many places. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and also, like, I have my networks as well. So I think, like, there's kind of that starting, like, of folks that are we knew or are in, in our networks have know his face from other things um like just existing in the world um I think that there were a, a there was, it seemed like there's an interest in positive news stories early on in like March and April and I think that there were a few uh avenues through which people found out about it and even though it wasn't really like there weren't that many you know it wasn't like a huge thing but I think people were excited about seeing something that was some consistency that was like this sort of positive thing happening really early on when everything felt really scary Mm -hmm. and I think that I mean to my understanding that's probably then how it also got connected to the Ellen show um (laughs) via some of that those things Uh (laughs) um honestly though 
One of the interesting things too is I think we got more followers from the um, the reckoning and uprisings for racial justice after the murder of George Floyd and all of the actions that happened around then. Mm -hmm. I honestly think we got more followers in that period than we did from <laughs> mm -hmm. um, or some of the things around that. Um, and then I think, yeah, just sort of the general engagement with publishers and authors and other people and um, kind of going from there. But um, those are some of the, the big moments that I would mark. But I, I also think it's important to, to acknowledge that um, I think especially uh, I, theater is very clear that this is not a project for like the attention and for the numbers and for the thing. <laughs> this, is a, this is about the stories. This is about the people and the connections. So I think, that, no, I think there's a little bit confused. of a squirm that no. happens when we talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we need, that's what we're saying. Why we need, we need a, Lydia. That's because <laughs> Megan and I want to talk. We think everybody wants to talk about education all the time. <laughs> and Apparently not. We have to edit it. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I think that's probably also what makes it successful too. I mean, it's what yeah. you're, you're talking about, Lydia. It's this balance of like self promotion versus the wh why it is that we do this stuff, right? Like, what is the values? What brought us to this work? Passion. Why do we think it's so important in terms of culture, being bringing culturally responsive literature to children and having a black man read to them every day with joy and, 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 and beauty and smile and those things that make their experience as learners um, like just this immersive, beautiful thing. And so that's why we do it. But there is the business end of things. There is the like, it doesn't matter how beautiful it is if nobody's watching <laughs> No, true, true. And that's that's one of the things like, yeah, and I feel like in a way for me being in this situation where I can just retreat into my space and, mm. you know, like come out when I need, when I want to, like that, that for me works really well. But honestly, it's been, I think that's been one of the, my core drives is um, staying true to why this was created and mm. and of course it's grown so much and like I was saying like that has brought responsibility as well you're thinking okay what am I putting out like Lydia mentions you know when oh um when say the George Floyd um uh, case happened and many other things that happened around that time so there was so much where I think I was I I felt myself I found myself conflicting like do mm. I come out and do I bring the news with me? And is that what I'm going to share the whole time? Mm. Or do I come out and just continue with, with the way um, the, um, the show was going? And so that was one of the things where I came out realizing that I do have little kids that are coming out tuning in. And so mm -hmm. realizing too, like, can I give them an escape from some of those things at times, but still use the platform for good, still remind people that we need to treat each other um fairly and you know with justice and so on and so just bringing so those things together and then hearing from people talk you know like communicating back and saying i'm so glad or even just somebody saying a message like i'm glad you're here today and mm -hmm. so that made me realize that there was a need and that was one of the things that i've pushed for i think the consistency in putting that out and also um i think lydia has pushed me a few times like take a break and i'm just like <laughs> oh my god i want to do this because i enjoy it so much and then um also, when I see, say, people tuning in on Christmas Day, you realize, too, like, people are in the same spaces the entire time. So those are mm -hmm. some of the roads that I've been where I'm like, can I give them a break? Can I give them that escape for a second and where we can just laugh and something else to talk about? So, yeah, there's been lots of soul searching as we've grown and also realizing, too, like, how much do we want to you know, how much do we need to collaborate with others who are doing amazing work and so we can bring it in. And so, you know, hence the social justice um, fair, for example, or the work with the exploratorium. So, yeah. Yeah, I do want to well, talk oh, about the social justice fair at some point. Thing? But yeah, of course. Um, one thing I would add to is I think that like, I, I, I've appreciated learning from Peter in that way too, around like holding a space for that joy in that presence without necessarily having to like because I think I'm someone who would want to just like 
like go for it all the time mm-hmm. but I think that like the perspective that also it's a it's a longer game than that and like I think mm. that in in holding true to the core of what what is trying to be done that there's also like it's it's not just in the, these flashpoints but it's in all the stories in between and all of the like we're not just talking about gender during pride month we're not just talking Mm -hmm. about race and identity during right when like certain actions are happening or right when something really dramatic happens but like that there that is integrated throughout and so there's this ongoing process of exposure to different stories and learning and connecting that way that I think now especially now that it's been going on for a while it's like okay like there's a (laughs) helping me be more patient too with with with, um the yeah how it goes yeah and even just growing in terms of the platforms used and so on and even even just simple things like oh getting a new mic and trying it out and mm-hmm. you know being excited about that and people might wonder the next day like, why are you so excited to the double excited but it could be that new microphone just like yes. I know I'm pretty excited about my new microphone <laughs> microphones are a big deal people don't realize like okay. you know it's, it's a super big deal um yeah but yeah I, no. I'm curious Peter you're doing this while you're teaching full time a, a full distance learning yeah. course of second graders who may log into your you know but you have this whole other aspect of teaching um and Lydia you also have a full time job and uh, uh, in the district um working around a number of things how are you guys balancing this and also you know getting to the idea of this is shifting our thinking and pra- this whole thing has really shifted everything for all of us right we're sort of um, leaping into the future of education. So I'm wondering, how do you see this influencing your teaching moving forward? Or what's next in terms of the evolution of teaching for, for you? Yeah. You, uh, well, if I go first, I just, um, one of the things that I think that I've clearly seen change has been um, curriculum. You saw how much we were not designed, we were not ready to be in distance learning. There was a lot of um, trying out things, you know, like just every teacher pulling on stuff and being like, okay, maybe we'll try this, maybe we'll try that. And so you saw that coming in as we came into this, uh, into the fall, this time when we we're opening, you're like, oh, now there's a little more organization with certain things. But going forward, I think um, certain assessments don't need to be done in person like that can be done online if, mm-hmm. if you know if it's, it's an option that could be done and then also I was just joking with Lydia the other time I was like I wonder what will happen to snow days I know in Auckland we don't have <laughs> snow days but I think this is a change right like this is something now where people will be at home and say oh we're not coming into school today classes continue on zoom or something yeah. you know? so it's an interesting thing or even say you know incidents happen we've had so many you know terrible incidents happen in schools mm-hmm. and kids go home or the school is closed for that so instead of maybe extending over time, you might say, oh, we'll do this over. You might have more counseling or something that might happen online. So realizing what's possible, kind of like you mentioned, Megan, at the beginning, like realizing what's possible and pushing yourself. And I think for one person, for me, like I jump into stuff like mm. this can be done. I, I really feel like I can do everything. <laughs> and I always need, you know, like somebody to check me like Lydia was like, no, no, this is maybe. <laughs> 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 You know, so, but that's the thing. It's like when you jump and realizing those things and then looking at now we're beginning to provide teachers, for example, with OUSD, we we finally got computers at home and monitors, which is really, really cool to see that happening now because we've been expecting teachers to present yeah, meaningful material and good material out with the students, but we've not asked them if they have good internet. We've not asked them if they have a good running computer. Maybe the computer they have is 10 years old, you know, like things like that. So it's been really good to see some of those things as people are realizing like, oh yeah, we need to do this. And um, yeah, so for me, like that has been big, big, big changes that have happened for sure. Sorry. Yeah, I think, go ahead, Lydia. Oh no, I was just going to ask if there's things specifically around story time and the, the, experience of that or like the things that have been happening with that that you feel like would carry forward with the non-story time side of your education yes yes no you know like uh I think thanks for reminding me on that yeah one of the things is I'm I'm committed like my my you know my my first job my what what pays my bills is my teaching and so 
like I just enjoy being around my students, the families, and uh, um, and as Lydia will tell you, I'm a big goofball. Like I just, <laughs> I just, I, I goof all the time, and so it's just one of those things that I feel like my students relate with that. You know, they think I'm the funniest person in the world, so <laughs> who doesn't want that. So I just who want doesn't to want that. <laughs> Them well, I taught time. middle school, Peter, and my kids said no, like middle school, they don't think you're funny at all. And I, I forgot that until I now have a middle schooler in my house and I'm yeah. reminded how not, no. cool not funny I am. So do enjoy it. Uh, I know, right? right. No, so absolutely. I enjoy that. And then um, I think moving forward, you know, I've been able to speak. I have an amazing principal, like, you know, you know, Heather is just, the, you know, like I, I, yeah. I know many people who would give everything to be in a space where we are. Emerson is just such a great connected community. And so being around that and being able to talk to my principal and say, okay, this is what's happening. This is what I'm doing and getting the support and saying, okay, so your timetable is like this. This is how, you know, like these are the hours you need to meet in the week, in the, in, for every day, for every student. Mm-hmm. So making sure we're meeting those, but saying, okay, so maybe if we're going to end at 12, you can end at one so that you have that 30 minutes that you can put to what you're doing. So being able to have that somebody supportive like that has really made me see what's possible when um, you have support for one. And then also when you speak up, because yeah. a lot of times we just think people will know what we want, but that's not always the case. If you do speak clearly, communicate what you're doing and what you want. And I think that um, most of the times you have um, people understand and they can support you better. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to underscore a few a few of the things that I've heard in this show because it it I I and I'm speaking as like a white lady now. So I'm and I name that because you know, like if you represent the culture of power and you represent a place where like maybe not understanding why the power of your stories are so important. So for me, I was like when well, for first want to put a like a highlighter under a decision to have um, explicitly in cl- books around students um, of color or underrepresented students is really important. And not just, you know, the stories uh, that we hear about, like another kid's story about um, Sojourner Truth or something like that, which mm-hmm. is fine. And it's great that that story is there and that's important. But what that does is it continues to portray or give kids only the image of, of African Americans as slaves and during that time and in this historical moment or Native Americans, this happens a lot, right? Like people think that Native Americans don't exist anymore. Um, so having just regular day-to-day stories um, that feature students that have lives and experiences that are just mm-hmm. like anyone else. And it's not, we're not putting them in a, in, a, in a box in that way. I think it's really powerful and important. And I didn't realize it. I like to think that I'm very down and social justice oriented and aware. And even I like had to have that be brought to my attention just a couple of years ago. Um, Your superintendent actually named that to me. She's like, Oh great. Yay. A a children's book. We're actually talking about kids books. She was like, great. And this is a book that's not just portraying and that I can bring to my kids because it's not just portraying, you know, my family and my identity as slaves. And I hadn't even thought, you know, because again, the benefit of, you know, or the drawback, all of that of, of being of the culture of power, I've always benefited from stories that, show, you know, the white experience in different ways. Mm -hmm. Um, So I just want to underscore how important and powerful that is to share stories that allow kids with whatever their identities, where they can feel seen and supported and to be, have that done by somebody who is so warm and welcoming and inclusive and creating that space. Like that's a really, that's a really powerful thing that you're offering to kids and families. So for both of you, I just am really grateful that you're, you're highlighting that. And then to highlight um, authors of color that are creating stories and you know, like it's the next layer of um, a level of inclusion and and bringing people to the table and allowing their voices to be heard. Um, that's a really powerful thing. And so I appreciate how intentionally you're both being around the responsibilities that come with that medium and um, of remaining authentic and true to who you are and what your values are. And, and I'm hearing that both of you, your self-awareness around that. But if you suddenly flipped, Peter, and became this other person that was like, look at me and I'm so wonderful, I'm, I'm going to tell you, your show will drop in popularity because it won't feel authentic anymore, right? Like it will feel not real. Um, and so I think part of what is making you so successful is it is your personality. It is that kindness and that care that's underneath that. The other thing I heard, and I know I'm going on a diatribe, but if I've been sitting on all these things I want to say, so I'm going to get them out there. Um, 
is, is the flexibility that I think educators are starting to find. So I love hearing from you that you're just somebody who jumps in and tries. And, and even you took some risks by talking to your principal and asking for some support and just taking the risk of, of her saying no or of her getting frustrated or whatever um, and her being flexible. But what's so inspiring for me this year is how flexible all educators have been. And we've made these giant leaps and bounds into the world of technology that have frankly been there for quite some time. And we've all just been avoiding and pushing back on. And yeah. I still am the, the first to grab a poster paper to write something down and not do it on like, I'm still that person. But like as for educators, for us to make those leaps and bounds to make adjustments and it, and it could absolutely change how we do things moving forward. Cause I'm hoping that we don't just all jump back to our dry erase markers and our poster papers when we come back to school mm-hmm. but that, yeah, we can actually offer kids learning experiences that are more dynamic. Yeah. We don't actually have to have snow days anymore. That's brilliant. I hadn't thought about that, but like, why would we? Although there was, there were a couple of schools that decided to do a snow day when oh. it snowed and it was super exciting and they put, you know, they, because it was distance learning, but the kids still, they still gave the kids and the oh, really? days a day. Yeah. And it was, it, I saw it on one of the groups that I'm on and it was, that was also joyful too, because they sent the kids out and they had all, they had a, um, what did you do with your snow day post your video? And so they had all these nice. kids out playing in the snow. Cause as someone who grew up in the snow, the, there was a lot of joy in those snow days. First of all, you sat there like just <laughs> intensely waiting to hear your district canceled, <laughs> listening to the radio. It was my, it was my school. Is it, come on, it's almost like the rubber room one. And then you, there was a lot of memories and joy that come out of being able to go mm-hmm. out with your friends and put your snowsuit on and mm-hmm. spend the day in the wonder of, yeah. of snow. So I, I, I uh, find that exciting that maybe we don't have to, but also what are the ways we're bringing, and, and that seems like the theme through what you're doing is bringing that wonder and joy back. And in life, in real life back in. Life. in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that, that flexibility is so important. We learn so much. I mean, we talk about it like in the classroom, I think a small version of that was always like lessons won't go as you intended all the time. You, might have, <laughs> you, you, know, you, you find this lesson where it's like, I've researched, I've done so much. And I'm like, yeah, this is going to be awesome. And two minutes nope. in and you're like, <laughs> Nope. nope. Not <laughs> so people start something else. And then, you know, and then sometimes it's just like, oh, on the fly, like I have this thing. It's like, oh, and they are so into it. And I was just thinking like, how can I make this more meaningful and this? And so it's like having that all the time. And I think that was one of the things with story time too. At the beginning, if say maybe the internet dropped or something happened, I would get so down i'd feel so guilty like oh people had tuned in and i let them down and this and then i think after a while and lydia you can speak to this too like i started letting go a lot more I was just mm-hmm. like, if it happens i just be like hey i'm sorry it's technology it happened and how do we move on from here so yeah, yeah <laughs> nice i do want to hear about the the that is like, let it, the being able to let go is such a powerful i'm sure that helps in the classroom as well um but I want to hear about the the um, book fair that you guys did before the yeah. holidays, because it, and I tuned in, you know, I sort of had it tuned in as I was doing other things and, and up here wrapping presents. And it was so powerful to see all these authors of color and all these authors of like, you know, just what a beautiful, diverse group of folks who came on and read their own books. And it was really uh, exciting to see the that promoted before the holidays and, and many of them local authors as well. So i um, curious how that got started and then what that, what the response of the community was around it. Lydia, <laughs> you go first. <laughs> um, I mean, that was, it was very last minute. <laughs> Again, one of those times I'm like. I mean, <laughs> we, had a, we had a couple weeks lead time, but it was definitely, um, I mean, I think in some ways it was um, authors and creators that we had interacted with in other ways mm-hmm. earlier in the year because of story time who have been, this was the fourth, fifth, fourth, fourth, yeah, fourth. fourth annual 
fourth annual social justice children's book holiday fair. Uh-huh. Did I get that there right? Lots of practice. Lots of practice. Mouthful. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I wanted to say book fair, but I knew it was this long name and yeah. I was decide to say what it was. So, For the but. fourth annual Bay Area Social Justice Children's Book Holiday Fair. I think might be the full <laughs> title. You're not oh. even reading anything. You just know it off the top of your head. How oh, and so it was the fourth annual. So it had happened before, but it was people looking to make the a pivot to doing something online. And so um, I think seeing a, uh, a thing with a platform and with people who are already engaged, I think that was interesting to them as a way to then... Um, and get, think about things differently as far as doing something online and so it was it was definitely very collaborative like quick like quickly pivoting from we want to try to do this thing to like okay like this is what we're doing um and really try sort of brainstorming and reaching out to that that community of and I think they really emphasize independently published authors and specific Bay Area specific um people who have different like different all sorts of different identities and really like holding that as core to what they do and so um that it was a lot of um a lot of getting to work with cool people and um it was cool to have other people to work with too <laughs> for something <laughs> on different elements of it um I yeah. thought I was the best co-worker, no? <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> but, you know, like, just I think that was also, that was the attraction. Just like Lydia say, like, that diversity that everybody brought in there. And also just realizing, like, you can't do everything. No matter how big a platform gets or how much it grows, you can't do everything. And so being able to have amazing people like that with amazing perspectives, amazing work, mm. able to bring that and be a host, be a conduit for that was just amazing. And, um, and, and you know, like getting to meet them as well, you know, like, you know, Santo Nagara for one was, has been supportive of story time from the beginning. Like he brought us books and it was just like, no the here books I wanted to share with the kids and so to have people doing that and seeing that was yeah it was there was no way it was not happening and even if it meant me doing it in my way that would have not been as polished <laughs> as, as with Lydia on and of course then she went and researched what you know like brought in so much to including one of and uh, switching platforms and bringing in one that has she knows it's been my favorite I think I love it <laughs> what is the platform you guys are using uh, right now we're using StreamYard. Huh. Yeah. StreamYard. Mm. StreamYard. Yeah, it's been it's been a game changer for me. And yeah, but I, I didn't know if I was plugging them in here. So oh, that's okay. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's another platform for for streaming. You can stream to multiple platforms at once. Um, yeah. Oh, nice. Like that. Yeah. But um, I think it was it was. I think that say opportunities like that or having conversations like this um, are opportunities to get clear on like what is this thing like what are what are the things we have to offer like what are the connections that we've made what is this community that's been built what are the skill sets that we've practiced and developed like I think that having those external things like like as we said there's always ways that we're adjusting and trying to be self-reflective but I think having those moments of working with other people or talking to other people also like really does kind of bring that yeah. um yeah like help bring some clarity to like yeah where, where things are at with the project yeah and also just also like beginning to you know like we I, I i know people mentioned this quite a bit but like norming the whole you know like say you you mentioned like oh a black man reading or there's like we want those to be kids as they're seeing it the six-year-olds and seven-year-olds they realize oh it it can, books can be fun and it can be something that you can do as a as a grown a grown person a grown man you know so bringing that also and so they start to see it and it becomes the norm and not where you know like this exception every time and so that's one of the things for sure is like we are going to amplify that we're going to you know put turn up the volume on this and um, yeah and so far honestly like. It's been it's it's been great. It's been a lot of learning for me and Lydia, I think for sure. And then mm-hmm. yeah, just thinking of ways how do I how do I get better? How do I come out better next time? Yeah. Just even as you were saying yeah. that, 
it, it, it brought up a lot, but it also reminded me of the, there's been a number of studies that have come out in the last couple of years about the impact of having even just one African-American teacher mm -hmm. during your elementary school in terms of graduation rates. Um, and, and how, so how impactful that is that your students get to have you. And also they get to see you every day on, you know, what isn't TV, but it's kind of basically like TV of the modern era. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, that I, I, you know, like it's been, it's, it's been great. And that's one of the things too, that has taken me time to realize that when you mentioned how, you know, like having an educator of color when you're, you know, like, or black educator when you're young and stuff, I grew up in Zambia. So it's like, everybody looked like me. Like mm -hmm. I, I do not have the mm -hmm. same experience. And honestly, it's been such an eye opener being in public school and being in Auckland and before that being in Baltimore and, seeing that and then the biggest impact of course like i mentioned when i had that coach and i saw I was like oh my goodness what this has done for me and it made mm -hmm. me realize this you know the impact it, it put into you know like tangible that that um that realization i had of how, oh this is what it means when we talk about impact yeah. It's such a tricky concept. I, I've been trying to, so I've been trying to explain this to lots of folks lately or, 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 or give a, a good example of why representation matters because it's, it goes beyond the individual person too, but it, like it creates these openings um, for folks to feel seen and right. We, who knows who you're touching or opening up. And sometimes we don't even know why it matters. So I love that example you gave of, of having different coaches coming in, but suddenly when you had a coach that shared your identity it, you know, it allowed you to talk or connect or hear or be seen in a way that was different. Um, and, you know, I think as a, we, you know, we all we can never have like the perfect representation of people for like the demographics or anything else. And we all need to be um, inclusive and, and work on that. But as somebody who's worked in a lot of different school communities, I also understand that when people see me, like there's a barrier that shows up because I represent a lot of things and I can work through that often but it doesn't take, and, and that's my job, right? My job is to connect with folks and to work with my privilege and to work with my identity and be a connector. But also that's why it's so important that we have diverse groups of people that are showing up in all these different spaces because we need to make sure it's safe for folks to connect so that we can transform our schools. Mm -hmm. So we can create safe educational experiences for our students because you're, you know, you're allowing kids to feel seen and, and, and by extension, by opening up your platform and your space for, for, other authors and for books and narratives that are different than the ones that children have grown up with. That's a really powerful shift that I probably neither of you will even ever see or be able to know, but that you've really, you've changed lives through this project that came out of necessity perhaps, or um, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's just really exciting for me that you, that you're doing that and that we're creating this space. Um, so yeah. What happens when school goes back? What do you, have you guys thought about it? Like what's, <laughs> what's, you know, what's next? Uh, this is a conversation that we've had over and over and over. Yeah, like, I, I can tell. tell. No pressure yeah. then. Like, yeah. <laughs> you, you have to tell us. First, live. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. What oh, happened next? Breaking news. Been, it's been one of those things where, um, you know, like we always hit a wall because it's like, okay, when we go back, this will change. My 1030 time will change. Like it will okay. have to change. I cannot do that. But also I was just thinking like, how do we still maybe – do recordings and this is the good thing with that platform that, uh, with streaming that we're mentioning so you can record or you can do live and then just thinking also how can i go live maybe on weekends or even evening times or you know like mm. at the bedtime story because we've done those um a few of those so far and i think it's been the response has been pretty good so like just realizing I imagine when you go back m most of the kids in the, across the country will go back all the kids in Oakland will have gone back and and since we'll be the last back. ones probably yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna say that but uh, it's true <laughs> <laughs> not because of Oakland just because of the Bay Area yeah, yeah. I mean there's lots <laughs> of reasons but I, I uh, imagine that your audience will also not need you in the same way as what I said you know and so the 10:30 time right now is filling 
a space, like a lot of the community meetings are in the morning. And so there's this window where you're filling in something that's really important that will also shift when kids go. So you'll be going back, but they'll also be going back. They'll be also be going back. And one of the things, and Lydia, you know, I don't know if you had, uh, before I jump into the next thought, you know, know, if you want to jump in. Well, I was just going to say, like, we did notice a difference in, in how many people were joining live at the, like in August, September, when people start, like, I think that as schools re- entered having more structure to their day there were some people who had joined in the spring who weren't able to join live as often um which is something about like having them on breaks or having Mm -hmm. evening ones sometimes to try to like still provide that and it is interesting though I was also going to say in that thinking about how like on a given story there can be people in like five or six different time zones possibly and Mm -hmm. so like ultimately there's never a perfect time for yeah. everyone so like no. I think that there's also like we've seen the benefit of consistency even though I also think there needs to be breaks <laughs> there is a benefit to consistency um for for people at least knowing when to expect or that they can find recordings for some of them afterwards um yeah, I mean, I also feel like plugs for like in the future, if, if anyone wants story time to visit somewhere, you know, like maybe, yeah. maybe that could nice. be an option. Just plant, yeah. we can plant the seed now, put the invitation yeah. out. Yeah, yeah no, totally. and that's like one of the things I think Lydia would tell you too, like I already have kind of like equipment that you could use for things like that. So it was kind of... He's ready to take it sort on the <laughs> Sort of planning ahead is like okay. You guys just can- gotta get one of those like vans and just drive off into the yeah. sunset with uh, the equipment. I'm yeah. just yeah. like, Lydia, it sounds like Susan and Megan have us bugged. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> We're, it's my dream, Peter. That's what it is. Yeah. I have the dream of like just driving off of the sunset in a van with my little microphone. So oh, that's right. It's, it's oh, I can totally like... see you guys in the Winnebago with the Mister Story Time with Mister Lamada, like uh, uh, all out in the big totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, the, yeah. Yeah. Bus. in the back yeah. part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. No, there's, there's, there's been there's been dreams. I think at one point I even looked up a van like I was looking at like oh how would it look like oh yeah (laughs) but it's it's there and then recently I was talking to somebody too who's um running a space that does social justice and they work a lot with um you know incarcerated people who are re-entering and that um and also trying you know to get representation and stuff and so they stated it's not you know it's not really it's just having a conversation with a friend but it was like you can use this space we would love to use and especially since we also Mm. do around literacy for you know, mm. um, people in, in prisons and stuff. And so that would be one way as well to help share that or have those in spaces. And so there are definitely collaborations that I'm, I'm excited about when we get back in person and also just um, You're doing talking some. About creating an actual studio, like a, a studio for the Awakening Educator with a set kind of thing. No, for story time with Mr. Lamata, not us. <laughs> No, no, I know. I know not us. I'm asking that. was cool, though. You said the Wicked Educator, so I was like, I don't feel like Peter was inviting us to join him in the studio. Hey, if you do invite us, we'll do a band. Like, it's cool, but... That was totally a Freudian (laughs) That was no fair, Susan. That's that's my... I feel like that's the way I usually get people, and you just... (laughs) You flip that right on me. It's like... <laughs> That's what I thought was going on too. I was like, this is- like no, I'm like, <laughs> no, no, this is no. great. I mean, like, yeah, no, no. Okay. and yeah, I'm open to everything. Again, like, I, I jump into a lot of things. Like, yeah. I am, I'm excited because I always think the fear holds us back or whatever it is. Like, it just holds us back. Like, oh, we can't do it. But it's only when you've jumped in. Like, even with story time, you jump in, and I'm, I, I don't know how it was for you with the podcast, but like, you jump in and then you start to tweak things as you go and realize mm-hmm. that oh, this is um and i think when you're when you're teaching all usd for for your first year i think you 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 get you get you get you know like awakened and um and it's you, happened you, up a little yeah you, <laughs> yeah you get a little <laughs> thick on your skin oh yeah and then yeah sort it out you, you're ready to <laughs> you survive that then it's all <laughs> it's all downhill <laughs> <laughs> Four thirty-one. We I know. I don't want to stop talking. About anything, right. We could we could keep talking. Um, I, I I just I'm so excited. It's been really fun to watch their journey, and I'm super excited to continue to watch their journey. I think you know Megan and I have been on our own sort of different. It, it's similar. It's exciting to be a part of something that you really believe in. That's really important and 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 
the, the similarity that I see is we're really excited about lifting the voices of folks who are doing exciting and ra- social justice, uh, really I- I inventive. And, and Lydia, you said this at the beginning, joy. Joy is, I think, where we need to be focusing on, on as educators and bringing joy back into all that we do because it's hard stuff going on and and Mm -hmm. and joy is is the essence of everything so it's been a really fun and wonderful conversation Lydia I miss seeing you I I used to see Lydia all the time our desks were I did too actually (laughs) now haven't seen each other in a long time so um this has been a wonderful conversation I don't know Megan if you want to yeah, just incredibly grateful for what you're doing and for I love just that message of just just go for it and put it out there and just the innovation that you guys have 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 done and the impact. I'm just I'm so grateful for students and families that you're out there doing it. And it couldn't, you know, and I'm so happy for this success too, because I'm a good people find success. It's nothing better in the world. So I'm excited for both of you on that front as well. Um, and, you know, if you have space for the awakening educator in your studio, well, you know, we'll, we'll be in talks. No, we'll think about it. You know, like, absolutely. No, we, we, those, those lines should stay open. We need, we need to do something, but you know, it's, I appreciate having this conversation and you bring us to this space too, because, I get to see such a different perspective, a different mm. angle. And then, um, and also just speaking, like I always joke with Lydia, it's like, oh, you, you know, she's my, you're my boss. Because when I was in the, <laughs> when I was the, the, the site, the site rep for the health um, wellness team. So that's <laughs> how, <laughs> like, how I met Lydia. <laughs> Susan. <laughs> I always feel like, too, like with Susan and Megan, I felt like it was when you would, visit our site. Oh, so, right. You know, and so you're like I usually Whoa. scared everybody I feel like <laughs> <laughs> it took me a while to realize that when I would show up at sites people saw me in a way that I never saw myself. There was like authority because I was coming centrally uh, just automatically there's that wall and I was like but I'm not not me. You're talking me about too. Other no. <laughs> I actually did that to your school, Peter. I came through and I was like, just visited the classrooms. And apparently yeah. I just left this wake of terror. Because oh, I just like, no. I was like, I just was visiting. Like, I just was like, but I was like, why is she here? What is it? I was like, I was just, I was just visiting. Yeah. I'm sorry. So anyway, the, wor- yeah, the worst about situation that. of that, and, and I know we do have to go, is that because I'm always called in when there's a crisis and, and, and when really difficult and painful things happen. And one time I was just there visiting and I walked into a teacher's classroom and she saw me and she just burst into tears. She, she assumed that something horrible had happened because I was. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. So just oh. recognize that we, sorry, yeah. things in- we all have different um, hats yeah. that we wear. No, absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, so, oh, so this is such a fun, <laughs> it's such a joyful show, which we don't always get to have. So thank you for that. It was really fun to laugh and joke <laughs> around and I'm super excited for both of you and we'll, we'll plug the show. Um, yeah. 10.30 and, uh, Pacific time. Let's yes. 30 Pacific ahead, time. Actually, Monday through Friday. Go ahead. Let's let you give yeah. a plug Let's end here. with like the pitch. The plug, yeah. Plug. Oh yeah, the pitch, the media, and then we'll put it oh, you it. <laughs> your, your voice they're gonna hear. <laughs> well, please, please join us 10 30 Pacific time on uh, Facebook Live as well as YouTube Live. So do join us and um, please send your recommendations as well if you have stories that you want to be read on story time. Depending on permissions, we will absolutely work so that we can get them to you. Thank you. Class is dismissed. Wasn't that fun? Susan and Megan are always happy to greet you on the next episode of The Awakening Educator. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Education is the foundation for a brighter future. Open your eyes to The Awakening Educator.